Hey, I'm Evan Duncan, the senior pastor of the Baptist Church of Westchester, and welcome to the first devotion from a series of devotions from our church for this Lenten season. After today, on every Monday and Friday, a new devotional will be available from someone from our church community. You can find them on our podcast channel or in our church email. To sign up for that, just go to our website, bcwc.org. Today is Ash Wednesday. So it's the start of this Lenten season. Christians have used these 40 days of Lent from Ash Wednesday to Easter as a time to intentionally reflect on our own need for a Savior and to reorient our lives around our Christ. Joan Chittister wrote, Lent is a time given to think seriously about who Jesus is for us and to renew our faith from the inside out. Lent, like Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness, is meant to be this time of deep reflection and deeper dependence on God. Ash Wednesday starts this season with this bleak reminder that our lives are fleeting. We literally will put ashes on our head and remember that we're going to die, and this year we get to do it on Valentine's Day. How romantic. St. Benedict told his fellow monks, day by day, remind yourself that you're going to die. This is dark stuff, I know, but I don't think Benedict was trying to be a downer. I think this practice helps us remember how valuable and important our lives are. We remember that life is fleeting, so we don't want to waste it. In his new book, Practicing the Way, pastor and author John Mark Comer talks about this role on reflecting of our own weakness and frailty as being an essential part of healthy spiritual formation. He says, to remind yourself that you're going to die is to remind yourself to live for your eulogy, not your resume. Lent calls us to orient our way of being, how we will live around what is worth living for, around the one who is love. Growing up, I never participated in Ash Wednesday or Lent because I just thought it was a Catholic thing. In college, however, I was introduced to these practices And I was struck by the power of the symbolism of the ashes. While the day Ash Wednesday is never mentioned in scripture, ashes are. Ashes show up all over the Bible as the symbol of repentance and grief. Ashes accompany deep pain and loss. People would cover themselves with ashes when they would turn to God and grieve. Of things that have been done to them and things they have been a part of that have done harm to Others, people put ashes on to plead to God for mercy for themselves and for others. On a day like today, when war and violence is raging, isn't it appropriate that we might turn to God? That we might refuse to look away from pain and violence and death, but instead, Turn our hearts to the Lord, admit our own failings, and ask to see and to be God's love anew. In Joel 2, 12-13, the prophet has just been describing some challenges that the people had been facing and, and then some more challenges that are to come. And the prophet says this, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He is relenting from punishment. Return to God. As we reflect on our own vulnerability, we also must admit that we need help. We need help. We need an answer to the messes that we find ourselves in, an answer that's bigger than ourselves. We need something to join in with, with these flickering lives that we have, to join in with the healing work of God in this world. We need a God who is moved by our prayers and our sorrows. We find a God who, when we bring our full vulnerable selves before him, reveals to us that This God is the God who chose to suffer with us. I like how Eugene Peterson translates the passage in Joel when he says, come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping, sorry for your sins. 
Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God, and here's why. God is kind and God is merciful. He takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. The most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel catastrophe. Today, on Ash Wednesday, I want to invite you to an Ash Wednesday service. If you're near Westchester, come celebrate and worship and reflect with us here at BCWC at 6 p.m. tonight. If you can't make it, please take some time in prayer to reflect on your own life and your God who is extravagant in love. And will you join me this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whenever you are listening to this in this prayer written by Cole Arthur Riley, author of Black Liturgies for Lent. Pray with me. God of sorrows, we cry holy for a God who is moved to tears when met with the conditions of this world. We are grateful that you're not a God who drags us out of our pain before we are ready, one who is not threatened by our tears but beholds them as holy. This Lent, Help us to make space for faithful examination of injustice, death, and decay in this world. We confess that we so often reduce salvation to the personal. Let ours be a salvation tethered to the liberation of the world. And so form us into people who truly see the world in all of its beauty and its depravity. And when we find ourselves tempted to look away, steady us. That we may see with clarity our most desperate need. For Christ. As we prepare for the memory of God hung from the cross, let us bear witness to all that requires it. Oppression, famine, war, neglect, loss, exclusion, loneliness, grief, all suspended by sin itself. Let us resolve to see and name it all. That we would daily apprehend the breach between what we are created for and the distortion we see in the systems and powers of this world today. Let us grieve the chasm. And as we allow ourselves to weep with you, let us hope with you in the coming restoration of all things. Glory to the one who met the cross with tears on his face. We look to you. Amen. Amen.